This is a buoyant ascent, a new concept in submarine escape procedure. It is simple and safely made in a minimum of time between entrance in the lock and breaking the surface. Because of the short interval required, the problem of bends is practically eliminated. Emergency ascents require no special or complicated mechanism, just a standard submarine life jacket with relief valve. For maximum buoyancy, the jacket is inflated orally after the escape trunk is flooded down and the pressure equalized. With the escape hatch open, the buoyant ascent commences. The prime factor of this technique being the initial expulsion of all possible air from the lungs, followed by exhalation all the way to the surface. The constant buoyancy of the jacket assures a rapid, positive ascent. On reaching the surface, the jacket serves as a standard life preserver. The British were the first to employ this submarine escape method as standard procedure. Since the inception of their training in 1952, they have made successful, safe ascents from 300 feet. The buoyant ascent was officially adopted for submarine escape by the United States Navy in the fall of 1956. Pacific Fleet personnel receive training at the submarine base Pearl Harbor. Submariners in the Atlantic Fleet are trained at New London, Connecticut. At Pearl Harbor, the escape training tank contains a water column of 119 feet. It holds 280,000 gallons. There are escape locks at 100, 50, and 18 feet. Forty men can complete training in one day, half in a morning session, the remainder in the afternoon. This training consists of a pressure check in the recompression chamber, a lecture and slide presentation showing the proper procedures to use, plus ladder training exercises and actual escapes from 18 and 50 feet. A pressure check in the chamber follows a brief physical examination by the doctor in attendance. 22 pounds of pressure per square inch, equivalent to 50 feet below the surface, is given with a hospital corpsman inside the chamber. The outer door is secured. The inner hatch remains open. The corpsman briefly explains the importance of keeping ahead of the pressure. Excessive pressure on the eardrums is relieved by closing the mouth, holding the nose, and blowing. The pressure is controlled from the inside of the chamber. Occasionally, because of a slight cold or congestion, it is impossible to equalize the pressure. Extreme ear pain may be experienced. When this happens, application of the pressure is stopped. If the ears cannot be cleared, the trainee is transferred to the outer lock. The inner hatch is secured. The downward cycle continues for the rest of the class as the pressure is relieved in the outer lock. The doctor is on hand to check the condition of the ear. Meanwhile, the pressure inside the chamber increases. A constant watch is also maintained outside. An intercommunication system is used for instruction and information. An official log is kept. With 22 pounds of pressure reached, the cycle reverses. Inside the chamber, as the pressure is released, the instructor explains the principle of Boyle's Law, which states, at a constant temperature, the volume of a given quantity of any dry gas varies inversely as the pressure to which the gas is subjected. Let's put it this way. Imagine this balloon is a human lung filled with air. Under four atmospheres of pressure, 100 feet below the surface, the air is compressed four times. As the pressure is reduced, air in the human lung, like the air in this balloon, expands to twice its normal size when it rises to 66 feet, three times the size rising to the 33-foot level, and four times as big at the surface. The human lung cannot expand like a balloon, so if exhalation is not continued all the way to the surface while making a buoyant ascent, the air in the lungs will be introduced into the bloodstream and create an air embolism. Upon completion of the pressure check, the men leave the chamber. 
The life jackets used in training are issued prior to the 20-minute lecture and slide presentation, which follows in the classroom. The trainees are shown how to use the jacket. It must be cinched tightly around the waist to prevent its natural tendency to ride up during an ascent. The training jacket differs from the one used at sea only in that a snap hook and toggle have been added. The snap hook is used on the safety guidelines. The toggle aids the instructor in holding the man in water. This relief valve keeps the jacket from expanding on the way up since excess air over two pounds per square inch is valved off. A mock-up hatch is used for a simulated escape going from the classroom to the tank. The jacket is filled with air until there is a bleed off from the relief valve. Pushing down with the left hand clears the collar of the jacket through the hatch. Use of a nose clip makes it easier to expel air through the mouth and proper hyperventilation is extremely important. The body tissues are supplied with an abundance of oxygen which tends to relieve air hunger. The left arm is placed over the head to ward off any objects on the way up. The right hand holds the snap hook to the line. The instructor gives this signal for the trainee to expel all the air in the lungs. The remaining steps of the training are completed in the tank. Ladder training exercises are conducted topside. Then the 18 and 50 foot ascents are made. The elevator moves rapidly to the top where it remains for emergency use. Access to the tank is gained across the gangway. A review of safety procedures and regulations precedes the ladder training exercises. Over 15 instructors are stationed at the tank and every precaution is taken for the safety of the trainees. The same procedure is used in the ladder exercises as will be followed in ascents from 18, 50, and 100 feet. This is the instructor's signal for the air in the lungs to be expelled through the mouth. Mistakes are corrected and practice is continued until the procedure becomes second nature. When the ladder training exercises are completed, preparations are made for the 18-foot ascent. The escape lock is entered from the outside of the tank. While the lock is flooded down and the pressure equalized, preparations are made topside. The hydrophone is checked out. An intercom and log watch is set up and the doctor is always at the top of the tank during ascent. An instructor in a shallow water rig opens the 18-foot hatch. All orders for ascent, however, are issued over the hydrophone. The first man is snapped onto the line. A safety man comes down from top side. Then, out of the hatch, to await the signal for the air to be expelled, the release, and the ride to the surface in three seconds. Just one trainee there. The remainder are instructors and safety men who rotate on station. The 18-foot ascents continue until the entire class has gone through. At the surface, an instructor clears the line and directs the trainee to the side of the tank. The successful completion of two ascents from 50 feet qualifies the submariner in buoyant ascent. The roving bell is utilized as a safety station for 50 and 100-foot ascents. An operator and two instructors will take up positions directly across from the escape hatch. Another safety man stands by inside the 25-foot bell. With the hatch flooded and equalized and all instructors on station, the 50-foot ascents are started using exactly the same procedure as for 18 feet. The trainee becomes more proficient with each escape.
if exhalation is not continued on the weight of the surface, the trainee is stopped on the line and taken into the 25-foot bell. All ascents are stopped while the roving bell is brought up to move the man to the top. After the transfer is effected, the bell proceeds to the surface. If the trainee had not been stopped, a serious air embolism could have developed by air entering the bloodstream. The doctor conducts a preliminary examination at the top of the tank. However, escapes are simple and safe if the correct procedures are followed. Thousands of training ascents have been made without mishap, and it is easily seen that the inflated jacket will positively bring the escapee to the surface. From 50 feet, it takes eight seconds to reach the top. After two 50-foot ascents, volunteers can make the escape from 100 feet. The lock is entered from the bottom of the training tank. The skirt in the 100-foot lock is set up exactly the same as the escape trunk in the after torpedo room of a submarine. All instructions are given from the top of the tank over the intercom system. The order is given for the lock to be flooded down. Water from the training tank enters rapidly through a six inch pipe. When the water meets the skirt, air is bled into the lock. And as the pressure in the lock is equalized, the escape hatch opens automatically. A safety man stands by in the shallow water rig to pull back the hatch and lock it open. The instructor in the 100-foot lock checks the skirt as he goes up to get the safety guideline. This line is brought back through the skirt and fastened to the deck of the lock. The jacket is blown up orally. The nose clip is permanently secured to the jacket and is always used for ascent. After all safety precautions have been taken, permission is given to start the ascent. There are only three vital points to remember in any buoyant ascent. First, hyperventilation, an ample supply of fresh oxygen in the bloodstream followed by the complete expulsion of all air before starting and the continued exhalation of air through the mouth during the entire ascent. The ever-present safety men are on station and it takes just 20 seconds to come up from 100 feet. One of the first submariners to undergo training was Rear Admiral Elton W. Grenfell, Commander Submarine, Pacific Fleet. In his words, This new technique represents ever-searching progress of submarine personnel to assure maximum safety and efficiency for every man in the force. I have personally tried the buoyant ascent escape method and find it to be a practical, safe, and simple means of escape from a submarine. With the knowledge gained by training in this new technique, submariners, as they have always done, will meet emergencies with confidence. <laughs>